Now, Oli, I mean, for, from where many of us sit, this uh, is a whites-only um, enclave where people like you and I are only welcome as garden boys and as domestic workers. Has that changed? Ovuyo, let me not be the one who answers that question for you. I am sitting here uh, with the leadership of uh, Orania. They run what is called the Orania Movement. It's a political think tank of this community, if you like. And let me introduce them to you now, and I will pose that very question uh, you've posed to me. Uh, to my immediate right is uh, Peter Grecha, and he is uh, the vice president of the Orania movement. Then next to Peter in the middle there is uh, Mr. Peter Bischoff and uh, he's the head of education and social development here. And then of course next to Peter is uh, Joost Stradom and he's the head of communications in the Orania movement. Uh, Peter, let me start with you, the vice president of uh, Orania movement. Uh, the question for my colleague Vuyo is that people like myself and him black people basically mm -hmm. are only welcome in this town as a garden boys or perhaps a person who does a menial job here and there uh, do you want to clear that particular perception about orania firstly that's one of the misperceptions we get a lot um we are based on on three foundations uh, uh, urania and one of them are own labor we believe that, that the people that live in the, in the town, in the city, for that example, need to do the labor ourselves. And uh, every, all the labor that is being done in, in Urania is being done by Afrikaners. So um, it, it, to that extent, we tr truly believe that we need to do the work ourselves. But before I move on from yes. you quickly, uh, in the day, I came across two police officers yes. who were passing by on the main road yep. here. And they said to me, Yes, you're quite right that um, Afrikaners or African-speaking people are mostly the ones who are employed in this town, but there are some colored communities who work in your farms, but they don't necessarily live inside here. Is there any truth to that? No, it's not true. Not, not in Urania, not, not, not on that 8,000 hectares we, we talked about, which is Urania. Some of the surrounding farms still employ other labor, for example, brown people, but Urania in itself, not at all. We do all the work ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bischoff, let me come to you. You're the head of education and social development here. So the whole issue of self-reliance is paramount uh, to you. So you, you run the education system here. Talk to me about uh, the artisan school or the school of artisan. Uh, ship that exists here. What kind of um, classes, what kind of uh, uh, skills do you teach there? Yeah, we have two schools in Urania. Um, the one is a more residential school and the other one is a more distant school, but both, both of them uh, present the education of a high standard. Uh, for us it's important to equip our children so that they can involved so that they can um, go for further educational training at various universities all over South Africa um, so that they can come back and also take part of the development of Urania itself. So for us um, education must be of an absolutely high standard and we put a lot of effort to make sure that that's just the case in Urania. Yeah. Uh, Just let me come to you. We've had discussions with you all day together with uh, Peter Krecher here and uh, you made mention much earlier in the morning that other races are actually welcome in Orania provided that they can assimilate into the Afrikaner uh, culture heritage way of living basically uh, someone sitting out there is saying what does this practically mean when you say assimilate into the African yeah. culture. Give us practical yeah. examples. Let, let, let's work on some context first. I think yeah. it's important to, to understand that, that what we specifically said is that Afrikaners are welcome in a town that is for Afrikaners, built by Afrikaners, and is created to preserve and build out Afrikaner So, so, so it's Afrikaners who are welcome here, yeah. not other races? It's Afrikaners specifically. Okay. Everybody who is an Afrikaner or identify as an Afrikaner. 
And uh, I think a problem... A colored person, would that qualify? Just give me one second to finish my sentence, okay. please. Um, so so uh, what we spoke about this morning is about culture and uh, about how that fit into the narrative of the Urania idea. Okay. What you guys have been doing, and I watched all the interviews, uh, and I saw the captions, for example, that you guys put on the interviews that we had, uh, multiple times saying that uh, in the whites-only community and so on, when we were saying from the beginning that it's a cultural thing. Um, so I think you guys have been ambushing us, and I think it's a very dangerous thing to go into an election, a time of election, and dividing South Africa in a way that you're currently doing. Um, focusing all your questions on race and taking away the opportunity and the voice from us when we, ask, keep, when we do keep saying that culture is the most important thing for us. Um, so, yeah, I think we've had this question a lot of times now, and multiple times we responded that it's for Afrikaners in culture, and I even said that Afrikaner is something that you must identify from your, from your insides, you know, you must know. Um, and it's a, it's a lot of things. It's, a, it's how you feel about things and what you identify with and how you socialize. Um, and Let me I ask you this question then. <clears throat> because part of how we've been doing this um, with this election pass is that uh, we, we're trying to get the pulse of uh, how South Africans feel. And um, as we were coming here, we were quite keen to hear what the rest of South Africa actually thinks of Orania. And uh, let me just uh, ask a question now that is based on what uh, kind of feedback we've been getting. And these are people who want to know uh, a little bit more. So how do you respond to this person who calls themselves uh, Dumi Mlambo Kumalo, who says, tell them it's 2019. The, their racism and tribalism belongs in the past. How does that, how do you respond to that person? What I would like to tell him is that um, it's 2019. And we're in a situation where Afrikaans is under threat at universities. Afrikaner culture has been criminalized and vandalized all over the country. It's 2019 and there is, um, on an application for a university, I have to state my race because there are different scales um, for entry to a university on, uh, based on your marks and your race. Um, so if we can move away from those type of uh, criminalization and those type of vandal uh, uh, vandalizing of our monuments and our history, then we can have a rational discussion. But if people keep telling us that, this, that we are inherently, that we, our language, Afrikaans, born on this continent, our name, Afrikaner, part of this continent, if people are going to keep on bashing that, then that is the reason why places like Urania would have to exist. And that's why it's so important for places like Urania to exist, because here we can preserve uh, what other people are trying to, to break down. Peter Krieger, would you welcome a... Uh a black person who absolutely identifies, uh, who actually lives the Afrikaans culture. Well, you use the word Afrikaans now, and I have oh, Afrikaner. Yes, it's Sorry. Afrikaner. Yeah. And um, what we have done, just to prove that it's not about race, is people have applied from from other European countries to come and live in Urania, um, and it's white people I'm talking about, and they were declined rights because they were not identifying as Afrikaners. Um, so, you, you see, it is a process. I mean, it is self-identification self um, uh, uh, regarding a culture, um, but to prove that it's about the culture specifically um, lies in the in individual themselves. So they will have to go through a process where they actually come and say, but we really are uh, Afrikaners. Uh, look at how we do. And, and there is a process regarding this as well. So, um, in effect, yes, they can apply. Mm -hmm. But there is a process regarding this. And like I said, we have declined people from other Euro European countries um, because it's really, truly not about whiteness. It is about the Afrikaner culture. Um. <laughs> Mr. Posov, yeah, let me ask you this question. I spoke earlier to young people, to young ladies, aspirant uh, business people, and I asked them because some of them have actually lived life outside of Orania. Some of them grew up here, but then went outside to get a tertiary yeah. education and then uh, came back into Orania. And I asked them whether Orania is a place for them to come back to because job opportunities are either becoming scarce, Afrikaners who live 
with black South Africans in broader South Africa. Uh, they seem to cry to say that there is this reverse discrimination with mm. policies like affirmative action, for example. Uh, is that perhaps your sense here as a person who's in charge of the education system? Do you feel that your young people are not getting uh, yeah. job opportunities as they should? Um, I think there might be something of it um, among certain people, but I think in Orania itself, it's a positive attitude. In other words, we are living a positive life, building a city. I think the whole focus is on that. Um, so we're not here because we are negative towards other things. We're here because we believe in our own culture. We enjoy living in us as, as Afrikaners. And I think that is a, is a common goal that, that sort of drives us to do various things. So, yes, um, for my sake, it is, is of that, that job opportunities is scarce, but it's scarce everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's more about being positive, building something, striving towards a certain goal, a common goal, and that common, common goal mm -hmm. is to preserve our own culture. Uh, you asked? You were telling us, uh, or I'm not sure if it's actually Peter that was telling this uh, uh, story of people who actually come into Orania. Uh, some of the people who come to Orania, they come here because they say the crime situation has gotten out of hand in broader South Africa. Is that the sentiment that you're getting from people who are joining and coming into Orania today? Yeah, well. As broad as the amount of places is that people are coming from, as broad is the, the sentiments that they bring with them. South Africa is a crime-ridden place, um, and that might be motivation for some people. Um, it's hard to, there's no specific data saying percentages why people move. But uh, crime might be a factor. If, it, uh, if people are having a bad time in the places that they are living in, they might look towards other options. And, and go How do you protect yourselves here? How Orania. do we protect ourselves? Uh, how, how do you manage the crime situation? Do you have a lot of crime here? Well, uh, I wouldn't say we have a lot of crime. We work well with the uh, National Police Force, the SAPS. Uh, we also have a registered professional uh, security company, like many other places have as well, um, helping citizens with their safety. But the, m the most important part of our safety and security is the, the layers of separation in Orania that is there's not a lot of separation between people. People are good neighbors. They are friendly to one another. They know each other so well. In a community with not a lot of people, we have a very close relationship. And that means I won't steal from my friend. Um, and if I do, I'm going to get caught out quickly because the sentiment of the, the, the spirit of the people in here is that we do not want criminals and uh, we, will, we will not accept stealing and stuff from one another. Peter Kriche, as vice president of this place, it would seem to me that there was a particular goal in mind that you had yeah. for inviting us here. Why did you invite us here? Well, to be honest, you sent us an email and asked if you could come. Yes. Um, and our normal answer regarding any journalist from all over the world is, yes, you're most welcome. Um, so, um, did you get what you wanted? Did you get the story you wanted from Urania? Um, you guys actually contacted us and we, are, we welcome journalists from all over the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every single week they are here. Let me reflect on our conversation mm. in the day. Part of the drive, yes. my sense, and part of what you have been saying is that you want to change perceptions about True. this particular place. True. What is it that you want to change the most? Well, well basically, uh, I, I mean, the, the truth and the perception is, 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 is a different thing. Um, and, and when people come to visit Oran, and they usually find a different place than they expected, um, which is actually what we are aiming for. But if we go back to, to our goal as, the, uh, as Urania, it is to have a place in Africa where we as Africans can can have a community. And if we go to the broader spectrum regarding this as well, we believe a better political model would be South Africa as a community of communi communities with a larger level of localization, um, the degrees of separation between people and state. And I think a lot of the protests going on in South Africa is regarding this as well, because we have this, this mythical government um, 
uh, and they don't really hear the people. In Urania, the government hear the people mm. because we know them by name. And, and th that's our goal. We want to share this idea and hope that, that the, the, the community of Minyameni in the Eastern Cape can actually, uh, can actually go with this as well. And maybe a Zulu community and the yeah. Khoisan people. We believe in localism. Uh, Mr. Poshov is someone who runs a very critical in institution here, which has got to do with education, also a social development. You, you deal with the social yeah. fabric of this community. Uh, let me pose this question on behalf of someone who calls themselves uh, Eastern Kamez, who says, why are they separating themselves from the world? Hmm. Are we not from one genetic mutation of Adam and Eve? Hmm. If they are not racist, if they are not racist, what are they? This is a question yeah. to you. Yeah. And you, you're quite a religious community as well. So yeah. this person is actually coming from the angle of uh, yeah. religion. Yeah. I think it's very important to once again emphasize that we are not a racist community. We are a cultural based community. But even according to, to our constitution, there is room for certain cultures to live out their cultural heritages, and that's what we're doing. So if we are positive towards our own culture, we're also positive towards other people's culture. We enjoy it if there is a Zulu community that really lives out their Zulu culture, etc., etc., etc. To say that we are racist is incorrect. It's not the truth. I'm not a racist, but I love being Afrikaner, and that doesn't mean that I'm not negative towards South Africa or negative towards Africa. Um, that's not the truth. Right. So um, for me, it's, I'm proud to be an uh, uh, Afri Afrikaner and I enjoy living with other Afrikaner people and, and uh, growing up my kids, um, educating them in an Afrikaner community. Hmm. Gentlemen, unfortunately, we are out of time, but uh, thank you very much for hmm. opening up uh, this community uh, to us and uh, we've explored quite a lot we've heard that you run your own municipality that you enjoy the cook sisters <laughs> <laughs> absolutely enjoyed uh, the cook sisters and yeah. i know that it has a particular significance has, uh, yeah. for this community so thank you very much uh, those who have been watching through the day would have seen uh, some of the discussions we've had it wasn't just based on politics uh, thank you very much to all of you for having uh, welcomed us here and if we are well uh, that's where we are going to leave it for today the ENCA election bus uh, is wrapping up its work here in Orania okay that's where we're going to leave it for tonight Colin Gambi coming through to us live uh, from Orania